I don't know why he's an idiot. He just is. You know, like you have to always, you know, explain to people why, you know, you, you know, actually merit help. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's it's too expensive for them to worry about. But then they complain in the papers that oh, another woman's dead. Well, how did this happen? Well, you know, look at how much you don't want to give them help. Through a family worker, I had uh, gotten a one-bedroom um, apartment with Metro Housing. And uh, now I was stuck as a single parent right in uh, the mire of poverty. 20 years later, I continued to struggle with poverty and, you know, with the issues around that. I'm a survivor and a fighter and I want you know, something better for women and children. And that's why I'm with the Speakers Bureau, is that to help address policies to make a better environment uh, for women and children. Hello, my name is Glenn Pappen, and uh, I'm a, I have a bipolar one which means that my levels get very high or very low. The only way to get down is, is uh, at the, going to the hospital, whoever picks me up, and, uh, or if I go on my own, and uh, getting medication to uh, get me down from that high. And now it takes about, uh, uh, I'd say, uh, about three days to get off that high. I'd like to go on to uh, telling you a story now of uh, one of my trips that I had. Now I was walking along uh, the lake shore here, and uh, right near Captain John's, and uh, for some strange reason I decided to uh, go on go on to the lake, and uh, I waddled myself in there, and uh, I was about 12 feet uh, by 12 feet in the water, and I was just treading water, and I was thinking uh, at the time that sharks were attacking my legs. You can imagine that how terrifying that, that would be because just as you're standing there it, it's like uh, it's reality to me you know uh, on any of my trips it's, it's like whatever I'm thinking it becomes reality and uh, it's very scary but uh, for this particular uh, time as I was in the water treading water and thinking that sharks were attacking me like I said uh, water kept on going higher and higher up to my mouth and my, my, my chin and and uh, I thought I was going to drown. If it wasn't for the patrons at uh, St. John's uh, or Captain John's, uh, uh, I would have drowned because I believe they called the police and uh, saved, saved my life because uh, next thing you know, uh, the police boat came by and threw me the boy and uh, the... Uh, Pulled me up through the boy and onto the onto the boat, and I realized that I had a body. So there was a great sense of relief uh, that uh, knowing that I was that was that I was all right. But as I got to the marina, uh, they decided to uh, where they were going to put me. They didn't know, right? So uh, and that's when I blacked out. So, but in circumstances like that with myself is that I get to a certain point and then it's just blank and I'm in the hands of who's ever looking after me and uh, I've, I've been lucky that uh, it's been people that care about me the ambulance the police officers and uh, you're a regular citizen who uh, who care and uh, uh, protect is uh, right now I'm, I uh, have a bachelor apartment I'm on the program advisory for, for Parkdale Recreation Center. I'm also with the Speakers Bureau, as uh, you, you figured out. And uh, I'm on a panel for St. Joseph's Hospital. And, and that makes me feel very proud and uh, to, to be able to give something back to the community. Hello, my name is Cheryl, and I'm a proud member of the Toronto Homeless Speakers Bureau, Voices from the Street. And lately, I've been remembering. We all have at least some good memories. Some of our more precious memories come from childhood. An Easter egg hunt, 
a magical Christmas morning, maybe mom tucking us in after a good story. Childhood should be full of these, but for some, it isn't. It wasn't for me, or my mother before me, or her mother before her. We were all raised by the state, and it's reasonable to assume that if we keep on doing the same old things, we'll keep on getting the same old results, broken adults. You know, people never say when you come from a good home, one filled with security, support, and love, that you should just forget this, move on, forget that you thrived. You couldn't forget it if you tried. And it's just as impossible for those others less fortunate. Seeing this poster, I'm reminded of one of my own fond memories. Once in my many placements in the Children's Aid, I was in a receiving center. And think of a receiving center as a bus or a train station, a pit stop before a more semi-permanent placement after the processing at the central offices. It was here I met a woman who impacted my life greatly, though I knew her briefly. I don't remember anything she said to me, but I remember what she did, and I, I can still remember her body being warm and plump and soft and safe. She tucked me in at night, and I can still remember the tuck, tight and crisp. You weren't going anywhere, a real good tuck. Then she'd kiss me on the forehead and sneak a little humbug under my pillow, a little Scottish candy. And as I sucked on that candy falling asleep, I relived the moment over and over again, the sheer delight of it, the comfort, the warmth, the safety. She saw me and she cared for me. It was powerful and I'll never forget it. Some people think that once in care, the problem for the child is solved, but it's not. It's just another beginning. Original traumas can be compounded, and when not acknowledged can become layers and layers of trauma which sooner or later have to be addressed. But at what cost? These children grow up to have children a lot like themselves. Tax dollars are spent long into adulthood on the aftermath of such beginnings, never mind the awful waste of potential abilities and competencies. I can't forget these children, those in care now, those now broken youth, and those children yet to come. I want to break the cycles of poverty and abuse, both for myself and for others, for the children. We have to stop blaming the children and take a good hard look at a system which perpetuates, in some ways creates, these generations of lost souls. We have to look where we haven't looked before. We have to turn every stone in our efforts to keep the light in their eyes and the hope in their soul. I have to believe this is possible, and I can't do it alone. People ask us all the time, what can we do about poverty? What can we do about homelessness? And really this project is about uh, creating an opportunity for people to actually figure out what can they do by hearing the personal stories of people who have experienced poverty, who have experienced homelessness, and who actually know the answer to that question, who know what it will take to make a difference in their lives and in the lives of their community. And to increase understanding and to deal with stigma so that people People who maybe believe that people are poor because they're lazy or homeless because it's a lifestyle choice, we give them an opportunity to ask the questions they need to ask in order to learn and expand their own horizons.